اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان اللہین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم و بہی نستعین و هو خیر ناصر و معین ان اللہ و ملائکته یسلون علی النبی یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا صلو علیہ وسلم و تسلیم اللہم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين أما بعد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم وقوله حق وهو أصدق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن تتقوا الله يجعل لكم فرقانا السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته We are beginning this session with the Quranic verse which talks about to the believers if you fear Allah, He will grant you a criterion for Qanan. So it is God who is going to give you something so that we can distinguish from right and wrong, good and bad. The criteria will be given by God. So God is the one who gives us knowledge standards it comes from god so the topic for today's discussion is about the islamic philosophy of talim and tarbiya last time we discussed about the system of talim and tarbiya in that process the feedback which i got from you was to know in detail about the talim and tarbiya its concepts other and goals objectives principles in detail so I have revised it and try to uh, bring the philosophical uh, approach first, then we go into details. Because if the philosophy is not clear, then there will be many questions which will come in your mind. It is a detailed uh, process. It cannot, I cannot cover it in one session. But we will go through it gradually. Maybe in two, three sessions, we will be able to cover this topic. In any part, any section uh, where you are not clear or I am unable to explain, please ask the question so that we go together step by step. Because it's a philosophical discussion, it may be very dry to go ahead with. Okay. So what are we going to discuss today or in our sessions? So the objective of this session is to be able to know the Islamic philosophy of Talim wa Tarbiya, understand the importance of the Islamic philosophy of Talim wa Tarbiya, recognize the fundamental basis on which Talim and Tarbiya are built. This is the key focus here that we want to recognize the fundamental basis on which Talim and Tarbiya are built and distinguish between the Islamic philosophy and humanism. Why we are discussing or comparing or distinguishing between Islamic philosophy and humanism? Because right now in today's world, in the field of education, the field of talim o tarbiya, humanism is the most popular, acceptable by the world, implemented in the universe, the educational system of humanism. So we will compare it with Islamic so that our understanding becomes more clear. Because whoever is studying in school, college, university or any institution, one way or the other, they are influenced by the thought process or the philosophy of humanism in every field. So we are going to put highlight on this step by step. So the first thing is the Islamic philosophy of Talim and Tarbiya. What is the definition? Okay. The Islamic philosophy of Talim and Tarbiya refers to how Talim and Tarbiya are conceptualized and practiced based on Islamic philosophy. When we talk about the Islamic philosophy, it means what is the concept? On what concept we make Islamic system of Talim and Tarbiya? And how do we implement it? How do we practice it? 
If this is not clear, then any educational system will not be clear to us. Because what is the concept? We go to madrasa, we go to school, we study, but there is a philosophy behind it which is making us read, study, work and learn something. What is that philosophy? Which is very important, which is the fundamental thing which we need to understand. Without it, education will not be clear in our minds. I will repeat it again. The key thing over here is conceptualized and practical and practice based on Islamic philosophy. This is the definition. Definition goes another level to understand. What is the another level? The another level of understanding is it draws from broader Islamic philosophy ideas, philosophical ideas about knowledge, one, existence, two, values and ethics, three, theology, four, human nature, five. These are the key components, key fundamentals on which Islamic system of Talim or Tarbiyah is structured. If I want to understand what is Islamic education, what is the Islamic teaching, on what basis, on what grounds this building has been built, the educational system is standing and running, the foundation are these things. Without understanding this, Islamic education system will not be clear to anyone. I will explain it inshallah in detail, but we have to keep it in mind when we're talking about Islamic philosophy, these are the prerequisites. If these are not clear, no educational system can be clear about what they want to achieve. Okay? So let me repeat it again and keep these points in mind. It draws from broader Islamic philosophical ideas about knowledge, existence, values and ethics, theology and nature of human being and the purpose of life. These are the key factors. Key, the word is not factor, the, the foundational structure is based on this. Let's go and discuss this, discover this more. What is the key focus? If I want to understand the Islamic approach, what is the key focus in the educational system? It centers on the overall philosophical principles derived from Islamic teachings such as the concept of Tawheed, the oneness of God, the nature of knowledge, ill, and human purpose, which is the ibadah and worship of God. So these are the three key angles which we need to understand when you're talking about Islamic philosophy and how this philosophy is implemented in the educational system, these are the key elements. This is where Islam is focusing. First is focusing on God, about Tawheed. Then it is focusing on the nature of knowledge and then human purpose. What is the human purpose? As we go forward, it will become more clear that what do we want to understand? Where are we heading? This is the focus. Is this point clear? Any questions up till now? Or we go ahead. We go with the scope. Now what is the scope? It explores general educational concepts from Islamic worldview, addressing questions like, what is the purpose of learning? What is knowledge? How should education shape a person spiritually, ethically and intellectually? When we send our children to school, when we send our children to madrasa, when we send our children to university, college or any academic institution, we need to ask, what are you teaching? What kind of learning is taking place? What kind of personality this child is going to become? If you will not know the curriculum, if you will not know the principles on which they are teaching your child, you will not know what he's going to become after 15 years, after 10 years. Whether it the child is in any academic institution, these are the key 
areas where we need to work, understand, then we will get results. So why is the Islamic philosophy of Ta'aleem o Tarbiyah important? Okay. The Islamic philosophy of Ta'aleem o Tarbiyah is important for several reasons, both for the individual and society at large. And it is deeply rooted in Islamic teaching and values. So the key factor here is, if we want to understand are we studying in the Islamic system or we are not studying in the Islamic system? What is the difference? Which system are we studying? Because they are teaching us something they are giving us to our mind, something they are doing for our internal aspect, something to social aspect. We need to understand that where we are going, where we are heading. Yes, we are studying in a secular system. Let's see. So some key points about importance of Islamic philosophy. Okay. The important key points are Islamic philosophy guides the purpose of education. Without having philosophy, you can't have the goals of education. You can't have purpose of education. Any educational system which is there in this world has a philosophy behind. Based on that philosophy, they have purpose of education, goals of education. So that philosophy is very important because it gives you vision. Philosophy is about vision. It, give, it guides you. So it guides the educational system, whether it's secular, it's liberal, it's Islamic or any, it doesn't make any difference. The second thing is, in Islamic philosophy, the educational system is integrated with faith and learning. It is not only about learning, learning anything, no. It is integrated with faith. Now, the schools which we go, the university where we go, are we, in, our subjects are integrated with faith? That's very clear because our educational system is not Islamic. Okay? Yes, very true. So character and moral development, is it focused? Our educational systems are focused to develop character and moral development of the students? Do they teach any subjects such like that? No. And that is also not from Islamic perspective. That is also from secular perspective. So the other key point is, it fosters spiritual growth. If we are looking at the Islamic philosophy and we are looking at the educational system, it should foster spiritual growth. Do we have such a system where school, college, university is looking at the spiritual growth of the student? Okay. Creates a balanced society. The object is to create a balanced society in every aspect. Promotes lifelong learning. Is there any process where it's lifelong learning process? Because Islam focuses on the lifelong process, right? Minal, minal mahad ilal lahad. That's the objective. Lifelong learning. It doesn't stop. It never retires in Islamic concept. Respect the dignity of learners is always valued. Learning is a lifelong process and is always valued. Combines rationality with revelation. In the Islamic concept, aql and wahi, they are combined. They work together, hands in hand. But in non-Islamic, there is no concept of wahi. It's only rational approach. Fulfill the ultimate purpose of serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in the Islamic philosophy, the education and the ultimate goal is to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in non-Islamic, there is no concept of serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or mankind or the creation of God. These are the very simple key points to understand the philosophy of Islam, Islamic philosophy of education.
okay? Because I'm, I'm going step by step to understand and compare with others. So now if I want to see all these points and see in my schooling, did I learn these things? In my university, were I taught these things? Or any other institution where I go to learn something, do they teach these things? If they're not giving me these Islamic things in my educational system, then I'm not studying in Islamic system. Even if you keep the name Islamic, it won't be Islamic. Because these things are not there. So this has to be very clear before we go to the next step. Because we are talking about Islamic philosophy. So if I say, yes, my system has Islamic, then this should be part of my curriculum. This should be part of the syllabus. This should be part of the environment of the school. Otherwise, we cannot give education. Let's go ahead. Now, this is the key focus area where I need your concentration. Because these are the fundamentals. What is the fundamental basis on which Talim and Tarbiyah is built? There has to be some pillars. Like this table has some pillars. Based on that, it is standing. So these are the fundamental bases of Talim and Tarbiyah. So we will, I will mention few of them and we will compare it with humanism, which is currently the dominating system, philosophy in the world. So these are some technical terms, then explanation will come later on. So the fundamental basis of Talim o Tarbiya is based on epistemology, ontology, theology, anthropology and exology. These are the five major foundations on which you see Islamic system of education. What are these? I will explain. I will try my best to explain. All these terminologies have a Western meaning and Islamic meaning also. So we are looking at the Islamic meaning from Islamic perspective. There are other things, but in Islam, these are the five key factors on which you can, see, you can say we are doing talim or tarbiyat of these human beings. Because talim is for human beings, right? Talim and tarbiyat of a human being. So let's see how philosophy is built. What are the bases? Because on these bases, you make your talim or tarbiyat program. So let's start with number one, epistemology. Theory of knowledge. Epistemology is called theory of knowledge. So what does it do? In a very simple definition, epistemology is a study of knowledge, its source and limits. From the Islamic, from an Islamic perspective, epistemology examines how knowledge is acquired, validated, and applied. It is also mentions its types and levels. This is the key step towards building an educational system, a system of Talim or Tarbiyah. So when we say, I have a knowledge, so there are many questions. What type of knowledge do you have? What thing you call knowledge? What's the difference between information and knowledge? Is knowledge permanent or temporary? Is knowledge internal or external? Is it categorized or not? Level, stages? There are so many things about knowledge. How do you know what, you, what we know? This is the main question. What, how do we know what we know? And how do you know what you know is right? Okay. Does anything exist in this world as knowledge? So philosophy discuss these things about knowledge. What is knowledge? What is the source of knowledge? Where we are getting knowledge from? What are the sources existing in a human being through which he gains knowledge or she gains knowledge? What are the sources outside the human being through which you gain knowledge? And how do you confirm it is a knowledge? 
So there is a there is a deep discussion in philosophy about knowledge and the certainty of the knowledge. So first we make this thing clear that knowledge exists and the types and the levels, then we can take a step and go forward. Because in philosophy, there are people who disagree with the concept of knowledge also. The, the first pillar, the first foundation is about knowledge. So I will explain a few of them that what is the issue in the world <coughs> about knowledge, knowledge itself. In Islam, there is a beneficial knowledge and there is harmful knowledge. Okay? There are different classifications of knowledge. Ilmi Huzuri and Ilmi Husuli. But in Western concept, in the liberal concept, in the uh, humanistic concept, there is no concept of Ilmi Husuri. They don't believe in Ilmi Huzuri. If you don't believe in Ilmi Huzuri, then the whole concept dies. So let's see. So let's take an example. In, se in secular humanism, in secular humanism, knowledge is derived primarily from natural and observable phenomena with a rejection of supernatural explanations. So if we are living in the world where humanism is dominating, when they talk about knowledge, they tell you that knowledge is derived primarily from natural and observable phenomena. So anything which we can see, we can observe, we can gain knowledge. It's limited to your senses. Whatever we can get through our senses is knowledge. Without senses, there is no knowledge. So if you're making your educational system based on this philosophy, what is going to happen? It means you are dependent, you are limited to your senses only. That's the scientific approach. Knowledge through five senses. Beyond that, there is no knowledge. Because they reject the supernatural explanations. What does it mean? They don't believe in God. They don't believe in Wahi. They don't believe in Hadith. No faith. So they don't believe in any other source of information or knowledge apart from what they can perceive through their senses only. So now based on that, if you will make your educational system, what will happen? They will disconnect you with everything except the senses. And they will say, this is the reality. Am I clear? Am I going with the right speed? Yes. Good. Let's go and see the other thing. This leads to an emphasis on science and rational inquiry as the means of understanding the world. Now, with my senses and my experiment and my experience, I'm going to define the world. What is this world all about? <clears throat> I'm not going to benefit from wahi. I'm not going to benefit from hadith. I'm not going to benefit from my aql. I'm not going to benefit from intuitions, nothing. Only senses and what I can observe. So my belief system will be scientific purely. Because that's how I inquire. And I will define the world accordingly. So humanism focus, focuses on understanding the world through human perspective and agency. Now my ideology, my worldview is Islamic or scientific? How do I define this world? What do I tell people about this life, this world? According to my understanding, according to my senses understanding, according to my perception, this is the hu lifestyle of hum humanist. They believe like this. They tell you the world is a, a natural phenomenon. They don't believe in a creator. They don't believe in a system which we believe. They don't. Okay? So I hope these points are clear so that we can understand what's the Islamic perspective. So let me repeat it again quickly. Knowledge is derived primarily from na natural and observable phenomena. There's no other phenomena with rejection of supernatural explanation. This leads to 
emphasize on science and rational inquiry. Humanism focuses on understanding the world through human perspective. Okay. So let's go and see the Islamic theory of knowledge or epistemology in Islam. It is rooted in the belief that knowledge comes from God. Humanism saying there is no God. There is no knowledge from God. Whatever knowledge is, is our knowledge. So they have rejected God's divine knowledge. They have rejected Wahi. They have rejected Quran, the message which is Quran. They have rejected what Holy Prophet is guiding. Everything they have rejected. And that humans are entrusted with the pursuit of both revealed and acquired knowledge. So we have two types of knowledge, which is revealed to us and which we acquire. We gain knowledge. So you see, we are very much far from each other in the very basic of the definition of knowledge itself. Then, as Quran says, Alladhi allama bil qalam. Allah al insan amalam yalam. God is very clearly saying that who taught by the pen taught men what he did not know. So God is the source of knowledge for us. As I, as I recited the very first verses of uh, in the beginning. God will give you furqan. God is the one who is giving you knowledge. God is the one who is guiding us. He is the first educator. Right? He guides us. So they are not believing in that. Humanists don't believe in God's guidance. They don't believe in God. They, don't, they are not concerned with God. So automatically we understand the major difference, the fundamental difference between the Islamic philosophy and the Western philosophy in the field of education. Again, the verse uh, which I mentioned over there, Ya ayyuladheena amanu in tattaqulla yajallakumul furqan. Believers, if you fear Allah, He will grant you a criterion, a standard to judge what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is bad. You will be able to do that. You will not stay in the state of confusion. You will be clear. And that is coming from God. And they don't believe in it. So my whole educational system will never consider these things as knowledge, as value. Now let's go ahead. It emphasized the holistic approach that integrates the spiritual, moral, and rational dimensions of understanding. Knowledge in Islam is seen as the means to fulfill one's duties towards God, society, and self. Does humanism define like this the purpose of knowledge? In Islam, it is your duty to gain knowledge and at the same time to serve God, society, and self. It's your responsibility. But in humanism, there is no such a concept because you don't believe in God. We gain knowledge to develop ourselves spiritually, morally, rationally, understand things. So we understand things not only with our five senses, but rationally, spiritually also. That is the key difference, major difference in the field of knowledge. That's why Quran gives importance to people who are knowledgeable. Kul hal yalamuna Are they both equal? Definitely not. Those who are knowledgeable and those who are not knowledgeable, they are not equal. There's a big difference. So God is giving importance to the people who gain knowledge. Because they know God. By gaining knowledge, you get closer to God. Things become clear to you. You start understanding things and you move forward towards God. That's the beauty of knowledge. This is just some classification of knowledge. There are, there's a detail. I'm just covering few of the things. Key aspects of Islamic theory of knowledge. I know it may be too much information for you at, at one go, but just to have that basic understanding of Islamic uh, philosophy. So knowledge is knowledge as a divine gift from God. Revealed knowledge, which is called wahi and hadith. Acquired knowledge, which is called ilm husuli and ilm huzuri, knowledge by presence. 
unity of knowledge which is tawhid purpose of knowledge ethical dimensions so sources of knowledge quran hadith intuition reason which is aql and empirical observation and science these are the key things which we understand about the concepts to understand the theory of knowledge so what are the sources of knowledge according to islam quran and hadith intuition which is called ilham reason aql empirical observation and science and any other thing comes to your mind what could be the other source of knowledge quran and sunnah hadith is mentioned hadith sunnah. ayatollah shaykh mutahiri mentions that history is also one of the source of gaining knowledge okay so there are other things which i haven't mentioned because the list will continue but these are just an ideas which we should have in mind that when we are talking about knowledge when we talk knowledge and science talk about knowledge is two different things they are very limited they are very limited to the senses only we are going beyond the senses the sources of acquiring knowledge within human being there are three the first is our senses the second thing is aql and the third thing is qal these are the three major sources in a human being through which we acquire knowledge so we have to develop ourselves through senses through aql and purify our soul so we get intuition from god so we have to develop ourselves that's why in islam tazkiya is very important to do purification of the soul of the qalb so we have discussed about knowledge is this till here are we clear is there any question about knowledge yes wa alaikum assalam yes please first question is regarding the someone who who is uh, good in knowledge but uh, is not uh, pretending as allah required to us and there is other one who doesn't have the knowledge but uh, somehow he can do the better so i need uh, here maybe you can help something over here give me an example uh, an example we have been obligated for example to go to hija we are obligated to to go to hija to maka hajj okay uh, and then other other side someone he doesn't have maybe the the money of transport to go there but he wish to go there but the one who has the all opportunities he can't go there because maybe his fear of something i need you here maybe you make clear okay yep and second there is somewhere you say for the one who knows better and the one who doesn't know so for this one who doesn't know how this one who knows can help the one who doesn't know anything so i need to two questions so if i may ask what is the relation between what is the relationship between your question and my topic by topic yes the topic which i am discussing here yeah regarding how knowledge is connected with your question because there somewhere you say for example there is one hadith uh, said the uh, the someone who has knowledge his dream is better than someone who doesn't have a knowledge okay 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 I understand what you're saying you understand yes, yes yes okay so you see when imam ali says that knowledge is something which reflects from your action otherwise it's an information anything which you perceive which you know is not knowledge until it reflects from your action from your uh, from your behavior so if i know something which is an obligation for me to do and i'm not doing it it means it's an information until i do it so it is in your information but it has not become your knowledge until you do it or even if it's in your knowledge but you are unable to do it it means you are ignoring it okay 
So you have a knowledge, but you are ignoring it. So that's why you are accountable for it. If you know you have the potential to do Hajj and you are not doing it, you will be punished. Why you did not do the responsibility which you had? That's why the person who has knowledge is accountable. And in Islam, it is wajib for every human being to gain knowledge. Right? Yes, this, no, this is 50% right. If you are supposed to gain knowledge and you don't gain knowledge, then you are accountable for it. And after gaining knowledge, if you are not doing it, again you are accountable for it because why are you not doing it? So in both the cases, you have to gain knowledge and act upon it. Is my point clear? Yes. So knowledge, when you talk about those who have knowledge and those who don't have knowledge, the comparison is you can't put them on the same scale. Knowledgeable people have value because they understand things, they understand their responsibility, they understand their role, they understand their duty and they act better than people don't have knowledge. So there's a vast difference. That is how God wants us to focus that look, don't live without knowledge because you will not have the understanding. You will lose many opportunities in life. You will not be able to go to Jannah because you don't have the knowledge. If you don't know what is your fiqhi rights, if you don't know what are your duties and obligation, then how will you go to Jannah? You cannot because you did not gain knowledge. You were ignorant. So that's why Islam encourages you to gain knowledge. Like some people make money, some people cannot make money. Are they same? No. In the same manner, the person who is knowledgeable is more, should be more closer to Allah, more humble, more down to earth, have a, have a wisdom than people who don't have knowledge, like ignorant, okay, in that sense. So now we are talking about ontology, which is the another pillar, another foundation for talim and tarbiyah. So if our knowledge concept is a bit clear, because we are not discussing only knowledge here, Knowledge I just, just discuss. Otherwise, if we discuss knowledge, it will take another 10 sessions to just talk about knowledge, its branches, its levels, its classification. It has own details. What is knowledge, type of knowledge, level of knowledge, classification of knowledge, and so forth. Now we are discussing about ontology. Ontology is a study of being and the nature of existence. The whole philosophy talks about existence. The core business of philosophy is to talk about existence. Existence as in general, not as particular like existence of a human being, existence of a light, existence of a tablet, no. Existence in, in general. So when a philosophy comes and talks about the relationship between creator and creation, or the hierarchy of existence of the concept of uh, cognizant being versus necessary being. So let me explain. When we talk about existence, in this universe, there is existence which we all exist, these things exist. Or they, are there any other existence? What type of existence do we have? So there are three type of categorization of existence according to philosophical approach. Scientific, they cannot define this. It's out of their realm. Okay? It's out of their realm. They can't. They're limited. In our mind, in our mind, not outside our mind, in our mind, we classify existence into three categories. Either our existence is a possible existence, either our existence is necessary existence, or it is impossible existence in our mind. So let me give one example. It's a very famous example, so I'm re repeating it again. For example, for me and you to come into this world was not possible, it became possible. We were not there, but we came into this world. So our existence is a possible existence. From nothing to something, right? What is impossible existence? 
can you think of a sugar to give thank you very much can you think of a sugar which gives a saltish taste it is not possible it will not be sugar anymore right so it is impossible a thing to be cold and hot at the same time <clears throat> is it possible if i am holding this <coughs> remote at the same time same place same dimension it is also hot and it is also cold it is not possible so in our mind these type of thing does not exist istimai natizan mahal okay that is the the term so there are existence which is possible which which means which was not there and it has come into existence and there are existence which is impossible in our mind because it does not exist outside the world in our out of our mind it does not exist and there is necessary existence which means it is always there which is called wajibul wujud which talks about god so there are three type of existence it has its own detail for example it is necessary for salt to be saltish it is necessary for sweet for sugar to be sweet so this is necessary so there are three type of existence and there is a relationship between possible and impossible and all these things we are not going in detail about that so this universe as per islamic philosophy all this thing which is existing in this universe is a possible existence it was not there kun faya kun it came into existence so from where who who brought this that creation or that creator has to be necessary existent to bring this into existence like our parents was the source for us to come into this world same thing god is the source for all this creation so this is how ontology talks about the islamic philosophy talks about existence that existence are dependent or independent or all these things now let's see what uh humanism talks about the reality because we believe god is the reality god is the ultimate truth the reality so the focus is largely on the material world humanists talk about material world with little or no acknowledgement of metaphysical reality beyond the observable universe so they say whatever we see in this world is material beyond this there is no material so there is no god there is no necessary existence they don't believe in it so if they don't believe in a necessary existence then how everything is running so what will happen in the educational system if they don't believe in the god if they don't believe in the reality of anything because these are all possible existence it was not there it has come and then it will go again it will expire so from islamic perspective the islamic philosophy is deeply rooted in the understanding that the ultimate reality is god who transcends the material world from god material world has come into existence the physical world is the sense as a sign of allah's creation and the spiritual realm is considered paramount so we have two levels material and spiritual level humanism doesn't believe in the spiritual world so the whole dimension and everything on that realm is not there everything is this world so if we understand these things gradually we will understand the system of education is totally different so the outcome will be totally different our mindset will change our belief system will change our behavior will change that's how we are we are confused personalities because we are not clear what we are here for then comes the theology because in islamic perspective islamic philosophy we believe in theology theology is the study of nature of god and his attributes and his relationship with creation it involves understanding 
the core belief of Islam, such as Tawheed, oneness of God, prophethood, Adala, Imama, and all these things. But in humanism, there is no if there is no God, then there is no concept of Tawheed. So automatically, when you don't have the concept of Tawheed, then there is no relationship, there is no Imama, there is no Vilaya, there is nothing. <coughs> You see, if you don't believe in God, then you don't believe in a spirit, ruh. You don't believe in ruh. When there is no ruh, then there is no perfection of ruh in the material world. So if I look at a person just as, as a mass, as a material, and I don't think he has a ruh, then the development of the ruh is not there in the educational system. There is no sense of perfection in the human being as a spirit. All, the only thing is, how beautiful is your body? The material world thinks about how muscular you are, how strong you are. That's why we have Mr. Universe, right? Because they think that's the beauty of a human being to have muscles. Yes, it's good. Islam also encourages us to be fit. But what about the spirit? Which institution developed the spiritual aspect of the human being? Because they don't believe, humanism doesn't believe in that. Okay? How much time is left? I, I don't know. I have, don't have a watch. Okay. Let me end up here with, with this. Because this, this will not end. So the concept of God. In theology we believe in God. To so humanism and secular, secular humanism there is often a rejection or marginalization of the belief in a divine being or God. Humanism focuses on humans, reason, ethics and justice without reliance on supernatural beliefs. So when there is no God, then the morals will be decided by the people. That's why now we have LGBTQ plus and plus, I don't know how many pluses. Because they believe there is no God, so let's decide. So let's gender mixing decide. Let's everything do together decide, because we are going to decide. People are going to judge. People are going to decide. That's, that's the main problem having in this world. Because there is no God. Democracy. Democracy. <laughs> yes, so humanism focuses on human reasoning. No, no divine guidance, only human reasoning. So everybody can think the way they want to think. And everyone is right. So the ethics, justice, they don't get it from God. So when we think from Islamic perspective, the central or Islamic philosophy is the belief in Tawheed, oneness of God, all aspects of life including morality, knowledge and existence are understood in the relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the ultimate source of all truth. So the guidance will come from God. But humanism says, no guidance, we will decide whatever we decide. So it will always change. In Islam, it's different. Islamic approach is different. So I will end up here. Inshallah, next time when I will come, we will continue from here on the other level. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.